Okay, in this video, uh, I'm going to process a uh, roadkill turtle shell. I wanted the shell. Uh, it's kind of a big one, and uh, I saw it get ran over, and it didn't really crack the shell or anything like that, but it uh, expired. Uh, and I had it in the freezer uh, until I could get to being able to process it uh, for the shell. So this is going to be a warning to those people who are not, who are squeamish, don't like the processing of anim animals and such, uh, leave now. <laughs> I've got other less gory videos up or you can find another channel to look at. So I'm just giving you time to um, go ahead and make up your mind. I'm just giving you fair warning. Um, this is a, a slider or a painted turtle. It's a pretty big one. And uh, the shells can be used for many different things. Uh, and so I didn't want the thing to just kind of go to waste because of our quote unquote civilization. Uh, and I had it in the freezer uh, once I, you know, once I picked it up out of the road um, uh, because I, you know, as a way to keep it fresh, but also um, so that uh, because I was in the middle of a move. So now um, after cleaning out the freezer, this thing popped up. So it's time to go ahead and process process it so we can at least honor the whole animal. Now, the, the thing about these sliders, people eat turtles all over the world. Uh, snapping turtle is pretty good. I hear, I think I've had it before. Yeah, it's not bad. It tastes like alligator, which is sort of a dense texture of fish or snake. Um, uh, but but sliders aren't really recommended for eating. Um, they're, just, they're just not, and they kind of smell bad. Um, when, when you cook them and there's very little meat on them. Uh, the meat that you're probably going to get from them is usually from the uh, feet. Uh, most of the meat from the uh, most of the meat from the, uh, the snapping turtles you're going to get from the uh, from the tail of the big alligator and the big common snappers. Those things are hard, dangerous to harvest. Um, where I live Oftentimes, you in the late summer, if you go fishing, these things will go right after your bait and they'll get hooked and they're just kind of annoying because you have to unhook them and they don't want to be unhooked because it, I'm sure it hurts them and they put they draw their heads in and it's kind of hard to get your hook back, you know. And then you put them back in the water to let them go and lo and behold, they'll go after <laughs> uh, your same bait again. So in the, the late summer in the upper Midwest, Basically, in the Twin Cities here, these, these sliders can be a bit of a nuisance if you're fishing, uh, especially because they have very little edibility value anyways. But in a survival situation, in a pinch, I um, suppose you could get some meat off of it. Um, it's just the proteins that you're after. Um, this one, you know, I didn't, you know, because it was road killed, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, process it then uh, for the meat. So the, the guts and everything, the organs are still there. Um, when you do harvest something wild, you want to field dress it right away. Uh, for example, like a big tailed deer, if, you, if you're able to harvest one, you got to track it down right away. It, it doesn't fall where it lays. Um, and you have to field dress it, meaning you, know, you, you, you crack the pelvis, usually come up through the anus around the genitalia, uh, and uh, up through the, uh, uh, through the ribcage, through the throat and uh, you harvest out the guts and usually you can pull from the esophagus if you grab hold of the esophagus you can kind of pull everything out and it pulls the diaphragm it pulls the large and small intestines the stomach the heart everything um in one pile and then you kind of leave the gut pile for the coyotes or whatever um if you're out camping you don't want the gut pile anywhere near where you're you're laying your head down at night you'll just draw critters to your campsite but the reason why is you want the organs if the organs cool down they start to taint the meat. Uh, the liver is very important to look after. You don't want to eat any animal that has spotted a spotted liver. Uh, but it's important to field dress it right away. Otherwise, it'll taint the meat, and it just it, it won't make the, the meat feel taste bad. So I don't intend, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't intend on eating this thing, this poor turtle. Uh, I'm just going to be after the shell. So this video is just kind of showing how I'm going to go through and just kind of process and and extract the. The body from the shell. So um, I've got a, a blade here. Hope I don't bump the camera too bad. I'm um, just making sure I can get a decent field of view here. And so it's been frozen. I took it out of the uh, the uh, 
the refrigerator and I took it out of the the uh, and put it outside on the porch it's been very cold and snowy so it, I've been throwing it out throughout the day here and uh, hopefully I don't run into really any cold spots during this process so just bear with me um, on this thing we're trying to um, free the membrane that's attached to the the bottom part and the top part I forget the scientific names for the top and the bottom of it I think it's the car piece the car piece is what it's called uh, from the inside and its spine runs along this so basically the the, the turtle of the, sh the the shell of the turtle is uh it's basically its backbone spread out its rib cage spread out um, and so this it's attached to the spine up top which leads into the tail here um, so we kind of really have to kind of hollow out the um, the shell so again it's kind of a gory process so again one more last chance if you're not interested in watching this don't watch it find another video of mine or go to another channel so anyways I'm about to process this thing <clears throat> okay what I want to do now is just insert my blade and kind of dislodge it along the back side here so let's take my blade here and then pull it out and I'll gotta just start to start locking the meat I can feel the spine very tough cartilage yeah that's what the spine is so right now I'm just taking my my utility blade here and uh, I'm cutting I'm cutting away here like that and going underneath and cutting away and then on the other side underneath just yet I think it's kind of still half frozen cut away the skin from it and I really should be wearing gloves because if I cut myself I run the risk of a really bad infection uh, from this type of critter the reptiles and amphibians and things are really they carry a lot of disease uh, and bacteria and fire, you know, pro microorganisms that can make humans sick. After you, I mean, after I've processed this, I'm gonna wash my hands thoroughly. I've got a bleach here to clean the area thoroughly. Um, and so that's a big caveat. I'm warning you. I don't have any other place to process, so I'm gonna be extra diligent about uh, cleaning around this this area. Uh, so, anyways, I'm getting in there. And I'm just cutting away, trying to dislodge, to dislodge it. And on the back side, it's the same thing. I'm just cutting along the shell line, and to dis to to to, to uh, separate the flesh from the shell here. I'm just going to cut around the shell line. So there we go. There's a little bit of blood coming out. Alright, there we go. Start starting to pull stuff out. There we go. Okay, it doesn't smell so bad. Yeah, a lot of intestines there. Come up from the other way. All right, so it looks like we kind of got this out. I'm just trying to clean it out and dislodge all the innards from the inside. Of course, I But don't worry, we'll do something nice with the show. So I'm just kind of using my knife to scrape the membrane and all the good stuff out. But it looks like there was a, uh-oh. 
Oh, there's a couple of eggs. There's an egg, a couple of eggs in here. You know, poor thing. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, there were eggs in here. So it was on the way, obviously, to nest. And, uh, it got got. That's too bad. So it's a female. So now we know. Right, so let me go ahead. Too big on gore of reptiles and things. I don't mind big game, even mammals, but reptiles and critters like that. I, I can do fish easy, but gore and awful from reptiles is just different. It's not very. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I have to say, to be honest. There it is. I think that's pretty much the last of it. The major parts. So we got it. I don't know if you can see that on camera here, but um, it's cleaned out. Sorry for the gore. And then what I like to do now is I like to boil some water, some hot water. And I like to just dip the shell in the hot water. I don't want to boil the shell entirely, but I want to kind of to uh, make the meat harder, so the guts and things harder, so I can go ahead and really clean this out. And it'll be easier that way. So anyways, um, in recap, uh, we dislodged the, sh the, the turtle and the innards from the inside, like so, and then one underneath, like so. The spine is up here, so we dislodged it from, from the uh, connection to the spine, and then from the bottom, it would be the same. We just went through the back, had a little bit of trouble with the, the hip joint. But we got we got we got through it, and uh, now I'm just gonna get a pot for the hot water ready, and uh, dip this in there, and then it'll make cleaning out easier. Now, in olden times, my understanding is that you could find an anthill or termite or anthill really, and put your kill on the anthill, and come back in a couple of days as long as no other critters got to it, um, and they would completely clean this thing out. It would be just nothing but the, the shell or the bone. Um, that's how you do that primitively if you have the luxury of having a strong anthill around. But what's interesting about this uh, poor animal is this uh, was a female and it had eggs. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not sure how many they they. Uh, I'm not sure how many they uh, have in a clutch. I'll look that up. But um, unfortunately, it got got so. It's so, an unfortunate thing about living in modern times is the animals suffer from it, especially cool turtles. I actually like turtles. I think they're interesting animals. I used to catch box turtles growing up all the time. I love box turtles. I had one called Shelly. <laughs> Original, right? I had one called Shelly, and I really enjoyed that, that cool turtle. A tortoise. This was a land tort it was land turtle called a tortoise. There's a difference. They're reptiles. Turtles are amphibious. They need to have water. Um, so anyways, we we'll go ahead and get, clean up this area here. I'm going to bleach it down, disinfect it, and then we're going to get a, uh, some boiling water going. Okay, so I cleaned the, the area out using bleach, um, and I really should have wore uh, rubber gloves in case I cut myself again. Uh, that's a safety precaution if you choose to do this. Reptiles can to be very dirty and turtles specifically can pass on salmonella, right? So I'm cleaning off everything with bleach that this, this touches, all right? Uh, bleach and hot soapy water. So I've got a boiling cup of, I've got a boil, not a cup, but a boiling pot of water here. I want to submerge and put the turtle shell in there. Uh, uh, for a little while. I don't want to boil it completely, you know, for a long time. I'm not trying to cook the shell, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cook the remaining uh, flesh and stuff on the inside so it's easier to scrub and scrape out. And then there'll be a next process to this after that. Alright, so it was in the water for about three minutes or so. 
And I, like I said, I wasn't trying to boil the shell, so I was really careful about not letting it uh, boil. But the insides now are a little bit more tougher. It should be easier to take my blade and scrape out and really get this cleaned out and all the other uh, remnants and stuff. So there, there it is, just to boil it a little bit and then there'll be, once we get it nice and cleaned out, there'll be another step. Okay, yeah, so being able to just take this and kind of run my blade around the edges of the, the shell here, I'm able to get a lot of that meat off that was slipping before. I can just scrape, scrape a lot of this meat out. Probably could have let it boil a little longer, uh, but I was worried about cooking the shell. But it's helping clear off a lot of the, the meat and guts that the membrane that was still stuck from before. So let me dip this back in and kind of repeat this process to get this as clean as possible and removed of the the meat and the membranes and the guts and all that stuff. Not too bad of a smell. Um, again, you may want to have a fan or burn some incense or something if you're not fond of it, but it's not too terrible. Okay, I think I got this pretty much cleaned out pretty good. Uh, I want to make sure that I um, uh, get all of the meat out of here. Um, so I'm going to heat up the water. I'm going to boil it again for another uh, three minutes or so, not too long. And then I'm going to scrape one more time. And then we'll go on to the next step. Uh, but so far, so good. Turning out pretty well. Shell will be nice. It'll turn out all right. All right, so... Um, I went through a second boil to try to get it cleaned out pretty good. Uh, scraped out a little bit more, more membrane came out, but what was happening was the, the shell kind of has an outer covering uh, that's like a skin. Um, the rest of it's bone, and it was starting to kind of come up, bubble up. Uh, and it's kind of good that it did that so I can show the reason why you don't want to over boil, right? So it'll still work out. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm glad that I didn't let it sit in there longer, but uh, it was starting to kind of bubble up, kind of like a skin, a blistering. So anyways, um, I'm going to stop from there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, what you want to use is some uh, borax, and I've got this 20 mule team borax, you get it at the grocery store in the laundry section, and uh, taxidermists use this to dry out. Uh, specifically like reptiles and, and such for display. Um, it's got uh, sodium tetraborate, uh, natural mineral, mineral. Uh, and also a caution contains sodium tetraborate, avoid contact with eyes, do not take internally. So at any rate, what you do with this is you take the borax and you kind of, you put it, you sprinkle it inside of the shell. And you sprinkle it inside the shell and it should coat the inside of the shell. And you want to let it sit for about a week or so. <clears throat> Drying out, checking on it, and then adding more as needed. So what I want to do is I want to take some of this, it's kind of chunky. I want to put it all in the shell. Now I can take chunks of it and put it in that piece of fell in there. But I want it to coat all the way around. I want this all up in there so they can coat the inside and what it'll do is about in a week or so this will uh, it'll dry out the inside and then we can go in there and we can scrape it even more and get it really clean so that's the next step so in about a week or so Apply it liberally. In a week or so, we'll want to check this. And I can go ahead and just place this in a plastic bag. 
or not a plastic bag, excuse me. I'm gonna place this in a paper bag, close it up, and I'll have it somewhere I can see it, and I'll know to check on it. It has no scent, has no smell, so don't worry about, there's no ick factor as far as that is concerned. We're just wanting this to, we're wanting the shell to dry out. So, uh, remove the turtle from the shell, uh, boil it for a little while, three minutes, scrape out as much of the flesh as you can and guts and membrane, then apply some either salt will work too, or borax, and taxidermists use borax, and uh, let it sit for about a week. And then when it dries out, we'll come and we'll scrape it up some more. It should be completely dry in there. And it'll be nice and clean. And then we can finish processing this. By that time, it'll be good. All right, so here it is. It's been uh, over, over a week. It's probably about two weeks or so. Um, but just, you know, it's one of those things where you just put aside and let just forget about it. And then you're like, oh, I got to get back to that. Um, so anyways, it's all dried out in there, and the uh, borax has pretty much done its job. So I just need to take a tool here, which is a butter knife, and I'm just going to just scrape, scrape away the borax and, and the, the leftover remnants that have dried out completely inside. So I can also take a sandpaper when I'm done, if I can reach my fingers in there and kind of sand it out and clean it out and stuff. So I'm going to get all the excess stuff that's in there. Alright, so we got it pretty scraped out pretty well, and uh, what we're going to do is just going to rinse out the borax, and then we'll just let it air dry, and it'll be all set to go. Let's make sure we get, get it with everything. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty good. So that's it. Um, it's pretty much how you, you process it. I'm going to um, put a little bit of um, a little towel on it and kind of buff it real good to give it a good shine. Um, some people put polyurethane on it. I guess you could do that. I'm, I'm not going to do that with this, actually. I'm going to leave it natural. But there it is.